Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. I have got six sparklers from Australia. I, mean, I lived in Australia for a while, a few years ago, and uh, I had friends there who would have a, wi a, a fridge for food and a fridge for beer and champagne, as they called it. Um, just cheap sparkling wine. I think at the time you could probably get it for two ninety nine a bottle, two dollars ninety nine, which is uh, which at the time was about one pound thirty, one pound forty, and uh, yeah, you drink it like pop and uh, suffer the consequences. Have we got wines that we are going to suffer from today or wines that are going to excite our palates? Let's dig in and see. Um, got uh, three from Tasmania, two from Adelaide Hills, one from the Murray Darling, and it's called The Spiwa Cuvée Chardonnay, and it says Crooked Mick. Crooked Mick is an Australian legend who lived on the Spiwa, a man of many trades. He knew how to choose wine. Well, let's see whether that lives up to its billing. It smells ripe and simple. It's a bit of that uh, uh, sherbet, um, you know, when you get that, you get sherbet on your nose and uh, and, and inhale it. No, uh, not, uh, not that I go around inhaling white powder a lot. Uh, but here you get that, uh, yeah, that, that slight, uh, almost I want to sneeze chemical, um, chemical sherbety note. Alka-Seltzer maybe. Uh, it feels like there's some rounded, honeyed fruit behind it. Uh, a bit of biscuity character. It smells like it's going to be quite broad and uh, maybe one of those wines that you need to chill in, or in order to keep it fresh. Let's have a see. Find that a little flat and simple. Uh, there's an okay cooked apple flavour, but um, yeah, it's just, too, it's just too broad and fat. And uh, sorry, Crooked Mick, uh, it doesn't do it for me. Um, Tasmania now for with Jantz. I've uh, got three wines from Jantz, which is the um, sister winery of Yalumba in, in South Australia. Uh, but it was established, uh, and I can't remember who they did it with. Was it? Who was it? No, they, they, they set it up with, with, with some uh, famous champagne producer. Uh, I think I'll, I'll flash it up on the screen for you. Uh, this is their non vintage cuvee and uh, blend of, I think it's a classic champagne varieties. Let's give it a whirl. First thing I noticed about it is the colour. I mean, the uh, the first one had a slightly almost uh, yellowy, uh, verging on the orange note. This is much more pale and is it pale and interesting? Well, it smells. Yeah, it smells like it, it's, it's fresher. It's got this uh, uh, the, the, the the apple, the citrus, um, and it feels again like it's got a bit of breadiness, but it feels like it's going to be a longer, fresher, finer wine. And when you come to taste it, yes, there's the apple, uh, but there's also this little bit of cocoa and um, some red fruit in there, a bit of raspberries, uh, just ever so slightly cooked raspberries, strawberries too. Um, yes, it's, a, it's, a, it's certainly a, a more ambitious and elegant wine than the first one. Uh, more flavour, more class, uh, but more spondulis as well, I imagine. But pretty classy stuff. Uh, Okie doke, uh, let's see how we get on with the next one, which is called Dad. There had to, someone had to do it. I'm surprised it's taken until now for someone to do it. Um, there, of course, there is mum, champagne, and uh, various other parts of the world. Um, this is Dad, with two Ds, uh, made by Darrenberg, so the DA, and uh, it's got some stories about uh, Dad, Great Granddad, Dad, etc., on the back. Um, it's a uh, Adelaide Hills, non-vintage, champagne varieties, um, and does it live up to its slightly jokey name, or is it finer and fruitier. Knowing the Osbournes who, uh, who make it, there's probably a bit of both. Doesn't smell of all that much, um, and it, the, the, yes, there's a little bit of that, what do I call the Alka-Seltzer style, of, uh, or ever so slight sherbet, but it feels like it's not going to be quite as, um, as round and broad in flavour as the, as the Spiwa was, um, but doesn't feel like it's probably going to have the class of the, of the jams. Let's have a see. It's certainly on the lean side. It's it's certainly not overblown. And uh, but what I miss about it, um, it feels in their effort to keep it on that lean and not go on to the overripe fruits uh, style. Maybe they picked their grapes a, a little bit too early, and I could do with almost like a little bit more flavour. I look I don't look for bags and bags of flavour in sparkling wine. If you get those bubbles and lots and lots of flavour, it's too much of a good thing. Here. I just wish that they'd uh, been ever somewhere ever so slightly cooler and picked it so slightly later and still got the same alcohol. It's not huge alcohol, it's under 12%. Um, so the flavour I'm left with, clean, refreshing, but uh, not huge class. Good uh, and certainly uh, a step above the Spiwa, but uh, not quite there for me. It does have a bit of the, that toasty, yeasty character, but there's a slight donut in there. I wish there was just a little bit more depth of flavour. Let's see whether we get depth of flavour. Uh, also in uh, the Adelaide Hills here, but um, one of the coolest bits, the Piccadilly Valley for Crozer. 
2007. Let's give this a whirl. So Brian Crozer was the guy who, uh, who started uh, Petaluma Winery and uh, introduced this probably, ooh, I don't know, late 80s, um, maybe even early 90s. Um, and uh, But he's no longer involved with the winery, but this wine still bears his name and still bears some of his uh, stamp of... Um, He's, he's, uh, he's quite precise, ever so slightly spiky, no, not ever so slightly spiky, very spiky bloke, very entertaining, very interesting. If you cross him, it's at your peril. Uh, he um, doesn't suffer fools gladly. But here, there's a wine that has got, um, that it, it, it's got, the, it's got the, uh, the layers that I was missing in the one before. Okay, it's probably a bit older, I'm not sure what the, I think it says on here, three years average age. But here we've got an extra two years uh, and, and I'm not sure when it was disgorged, but some of that will have been aging on the lees in the bottle. Uh, some of it will probably be a little, little bit of bottle age too. So what you're getting is you're getting more of the, uh, the toastiness, uh, more of the pineapple. The fruit has started to lose uh, a little touch of its freshness, but you're getting these more interested, interesting like uh, dried fruit characters coming through. And, uh, but all the while, there's a seam, there's a backbone, there's a freshness, and there's a touch of minerality too. It smells really good. Still on the young side. Um, I mean, it's, it's, got, it's got all the flavours you want. And it's, it's weird. It goes broad to start with, and then just when you think it's going to be almost too mouth-filling, then it, 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 it sort of goes, OK, I'm not going to overwhelm you. I'm going to keep you dangling on. I'm going to keep playing with you. Almost the way an angler plays. I've never fished in my life, so I don't know what I'm talking about. But it feels here that there's, uh, there's juiciness, but uh, lift and freshness. And, uh, yeah, underpinning it all, this acidity, the minerality, and um, just keeps going on and on and on. Like me. We like that. Let's see how we get on with uh, wine number five. So we're back with Jounce in Tasmania now. This is a, a vintage one, so a year older. Um, Ch uh, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, 48 months aging in this bottle before disgorging. And uh, so it's a, that means it's, it'll, um, it might have been in this bottle for a couple of years. Uh, maybe not that long, but um, certainly a year and a half. Now, if the Crozer was on the um, uh, trying to be toasty, elegant, almost Bollinger-like champagne with that, that broad yeastiness. Here, it, it's more of an accent on the, uh, the slight exuberance of fruit, and I like both styles. They both have their place. What's amazing about this is it feels younger than the Crozer. Um, so you're getting this more bouncy, the, uh, it was the one I was talking about, raspberries, and uh, uh, yeah, I think it was a bit of raspberries on the... Uh, on, on the other jams. Uh, and uh, yeah, you get the raspberries, the strawberries, uh, the apple as well, and the citrus. Uh, but it feels like a wine that has still got quite a bit of development to do. It's amazing how fruity it is for something that has been on the uh, uh, on the leaves for so long. Uh, it, it, it is the, the, this accent on a juiciness and friendly fruit. There's a bit of floral character there as well. Um, and it, it really is lifted and, and jolly and friendly wine. Uh, I imagine if I put these two wines, this and the Crozer, in front of a, a lot of people, it will be a pretty much a 50-50 split. Uh, this one is uh, all about freshness and fruit. The Crozer, probably a little bit more subtle, uh, more what I call the life beyond fruit. But uh, each will have their fans. And uh, I prefer, personally prefer the Crozer, but um, I'm very happy for, for people to prefer the Jans. They'd be wrong, but hey. Let's see how we get on with the final jams. That was a joke. Uh, okay, it's the premium non-vintage rosé. Um, and uh, are we on just Pinot Noir here? Uh, it doesn't say. Non-vintage rosé based on several vintages. Blah, blah, blah. It's almost like a Provence rosé in colour. And um, like a Provence rosé, it's not jumping out of the glass and saying, I'm amazing, I'm big and fruity. Uh, instead, it's quiet and uh, just gentle, laid back. It smells like a wine that's going to have a little bit of red fruit character, a bit of the citrus as well. But, um, yeah, uh, maybe after the jams and the crows, uh, it's, um, they're, they're hard acts to follow. But let's get, see how we get on with it. Soft, generous, rounded raspberry, strawberry. Um, yeah, it's more on that red fruit than the, um, the, the citrus and apple. They've, it's got touches of those there, and it's got a fresh backbone. Um, 
perfectly decent wine. I think, yeah, slightly outclassed by the ones that have gone before. I should have probably done it earlier, but uh, it's pink, so I thought I'd leave it till the end. But very, very nice. Uh, good. What, what's, what's good about it compared with um, uh, a lot of um, similarly priced? Well, in, in, I don't think there is champagne at similar prices of, the, of this class. It's got it's got a depth of flavour. Sometimes uh, yeah, cheap rosé champagne can just be a bit too raw. Here, you know that there's a bit of weight behind it, and it's not weight uh, propped up by sugar. This is weight just propped up by fruit flavours. There's probably a touch of sweetness in there, but not enough to uh, make it remotely a sweet wine. Um, but I like it. It's yeah, well, I like it. Uh, it's it certainly in other company. I would have uh, hoovered it up and uh, and gone whoopee. But uh, slightly outclassed by the previous two. But nice set of six wines. Well, five wines. I wasn't so madly keen on the Spiwa and the Darenberg, the Dad, nice name, shame about the wine, but the three Janses and the Crows are Robert et ton oncle. Um, we will see you soon and uh, I'm going to go away and maybe have a glass of one of these now. See you soon.